Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's video. We're going to have a look at the weather next week, 10 days for today's video. We'll also have a look at developments in uh, the stratosphere. And uh, we're going to have a look at CSSB2 for next month as well. Uh, we'll begin though by having a look at the uh, situation for snow, because we have got some snow falling across parts of the country uh, right now. So we'll begin by having a look at the radar picture from the weather outlook. And uh, we've got... This band of precipitation here through northern England down to Wales and southwestern England, most of this is snow. It's a little bit sleety and rainy around these IMC coasts, but most of this is snow. And it has given some quite sort of heavy falls of snow to northern and western parts of the country um, this morning. As this is pushing south east, it is starting to get lighter and uh, die out a little bit. So um, it is becoming more sporadic as it pushes south eastward. But you see there are a few bright colours still mixed in there, especially across north east England, also across, across parts of Wales. So there are still a few heavy bursts of snow uh, in places. To the north of that band, we've got these snow showers around northwest Scotland and coming down to Northern Ireland. There's a few snow flurries down across the southeast too. Let's change over to precipitation type. And you can see most of this band of rain is actually snow. Most of this band of precipitation is falling as snow, though it's a little bit more sleetier and back towards rain around some of these Irish sea coasts. But the bulk of this is snow and enough to give a covering of snow for some places. But it will turn, uh, as I say, lighter and more patchier and sporadic as it gets further south. So I'm not expecting too much through the Midlands, although it might pep up a little bit uh, this afternoon. This is the uh, forecast from the GFS model uh, for this afternoon. Uh, at 3 o'clock this afternoon, we find we've got a band of snow through northern England and parts of Wales as well. That pushes a little bit further south as the east was into the Midlands this evening, some parts of eastern England too. Most of it will be light, but a few heavier Burst can't be ruled out, uh, and then that pushes down to the southeast again because it keeps some snow showers going across East Anglia, southeasting right way through the night. Eventually, that uh, sort of clears out of the way, and we find rain and a little bit of snow coming back into northwest of Scotland through the course of tomorrow afternoon. And then we're looking at quite heavy rain uh, through Thursday and into Friday. And on the back edge of this, the cold air is tucking back in. So some of this rain is starting to turn to snow here on this um, GFS run for parts of Northern England and Wales. And you'll see that gets uh, a lot more uh, heavier and widespread through the early hours of Friday. So this is the 6 o'clock Friday. We've got quite a lot of heavy snow there actually being forecast across Wales and Midlands and uh, Northern England. And then that pushes down into the southeast through the course of uh, Friday morning before it eventually clears away. So potentially another little dose of snow there beginning to crop up uh, sort of Friday morning, late Thursday night, early hours of Friday morning, potentially something wintry happening again. It's a long way off. I'll have to uh, keep you updated on that. That's certainly the latest idea from the GFS. Right, development stratospherically, we're going to have a look at the uh, temperature at 10 HPA over the uh, North Pole. This is the latest from the uh, JMA. So uh, the grey line here tells us um, where the temperature should be at 10 HPA over the North Pole in the stratosphere. The black line where we've been with those temperatures at 10 HPA through this season. We started off around average in September, went really cold uh, late December and into January. Then we warmed things up a little bit, going to there, um, uh, but now we're at, actually at quite a cold level again. We're underneath uh, this grey uh, line. What we're looking for is a sudden stratospheric warming where we'll lift the temperature up to uh, that sort of level at 10 HPA, and the GFS and the ECNGF models are indicating uh, that we've got one on the way. This is temperature at 30 HPA, which is lower down in the uh, atmosphere, in the stratosphere. We are actually very cold again at 30 HPA. We're down there, much, much colder than you would expect us to be at this point of the year, but we can expect to see those temperatures warming up. So this is the temperature forecast from the GFS model for uh, the 12th of uh, February. It's getting closer. Look at this. It is still going for a sudden stratospheric warming. We've got these red colours here uh, over Russia and also over Canada and Greenland. Yellows uh, in between across the uh, North Pole itself. Let's run through and show you how that happens. We start off again with those cold blue colours there 
in the stratosphere over North Pole. But we see uh, in around four or five days' time, those blue colours diminishing. We go to the yellows, oranges and reds. That's a major warming of the atmosphere in the stratosphere taking place there uh, into uh, next week. And this continues then into the extended range of the GFS. In fact, we get a renewed burst of warming quite dramatically around day 10, 16th of February. Uh, the red colours are appearing across Canada and Greenland. Uh, so quite an intense second burst of uh, warm takes place, of warming takes place in the stratosphere over the uh, North Pole uh, just after the middle of the month. And we keep it generally then quite warm with the temperatures at 10 HPA going through to the extended range, which is the 22nd of February. ECM is also showing this as well. So uh, this is the temperature forecast for the uh, stratosphere from the University of Berlin website at 10 HPA, which is that top level of the atmosphere, same as where it's just looking uh, with GFS at Metro Seal. So... Uh, this 144 hours, which is the 11th of February, there's the uh, orange colours uh, penetrating into the pole. The black cross there is the North Pole of the Northern Hemisphere, and we see those uh, oranges and red colours uh, pushing in towards the pole uh, at 144 hours. It intensifies then. Let's go to 168 hours, which is uh, going to be the 12th of uh, Fe uh, February, remember this is from yesterday's run, there's a, there's a bit of a delay on these coming through, so this is 12th of February again a major warming of the uh, stratosphere is taking place over the North Pole there of the East End yeah, quite clearly, uh, and that takes us through to 192 hours, where again, much warmer than average temperatures uh, going on, it continues into um, 216 hours, and you'll notice it is picking up on this renewed bout of warming around Canada and Greenland that we see just there and then it takes us to 240 hours as far as we can go day 10 and we've got those red colours really intensifying over uh, Canada and Greenland uh, just uh, there. Uh, so again a second burst of intense warming taking place in the uh, atmosphere, in the uh, stratosphere, over the uh, Canadian part of the polar uh, region. This is a major uh, warming event that is taking place here, and it will almost certainly have some impacts on the atmosphere. One of the ways we can see if uh, this warming at 10 HPA, the top level of stratosphere, is moving down towards the troposphere, is to have a look at the temperature at 30 HPA, which is lower down. We can't do that with those GFS charts that Metro Seal, they only concentrate on 10 HP, but with the ECNTUF from the University of Berlin website, we can do that. So this is the temperature forecast uh, for 30 HPA right now, where we've got these uh, deep blue colours, so we've got very cold temperatures in the stratosphere at 30 HPA. Remember, a little bit lower down, closer to the troposphere. Uh, it's cold there right now, which we already know because we just saw it uh, with the JMA charts. But that's how the uh, temperature looks at 30 HPA by 240 hours, by day 10, 15th. And you see that it's much uh, warmer then. Uh, warming has taken place, uh, major warming has taken place at 10 HPA. And a uh, warming is taking place at 30 HPA as well. Not going to the same level of temperature at this point. But certainly evidence that the warmth that we see at 10 HPA is propagating down the atmosphere. It's going to 30 HPA. It's getting closer towards the troposphere. And one other way we uh, look to see whether these warming events are impacting the troposphere is to have a look at the zonal winds. And you can see what um, forecasts happen here. Again, this is from the ECM WF. So this is where the zonal winds are right now. Um, we're positive with the zonal winds. Not uh, very strongly positive such as we was back earlier in the winter when we was up here, but we are in positive territory. But look, what's forecast to happen? Let's just close in a little bit closer uh, on that because uh, quite impactful. The black line there is actually going down into negative territory as we go uh, towards the end of the ECM run, which is going to be uh, around day 10. We are down into negative territory, which, which is a reversal of the zonal winds. When you see the zonal winds reversing, it tells you that the polar vortex is being put under huge amounts of pressure and stress. And usually when you get a reversal of the zonal winds, you can expect to see blocking 
appearing uh, quite soon afterwards. Again, that is being caused by the uh, sudden stratospheric uh, warming and by the developments in the stratosphere. So all the signs are there that this is going to be a major stratospheric warming event. It looks like it's going to reverse the zonal winds. So not only are we going to see the zonal winds weaken, we're actually going to see them go into reverse. Uh, and when that happens, typically you can expect to see northern blocking appearing. So once that's happened, all eyes will be on whether... We start to see blocking features setting up. I think we will. And if those blocking features set up exactly where they are sitting, that is always going to be uh, the crucial factor. Now, not much sign that uh, this is uh, going to have any impacts at the moment with the GFS Ensemble. But it's very early days. It hasn't even occurred yet. Uh, this is the GFS Ensemble, a prayer temperature ensemble, I should say, for Boston in uh, Lincolnshire, the red line here, the 30-year upper air temperature average. We're colder than average right now, really cold couple of days coming up. A bit less cold towards the end of the week, then quite cold again briefly to, as we start the weekend. Rather up and down with the temperatures actually over the weekend and into next week. Uh, so that tells us we're probably going to quite an unsettled phase. I want to concentrate on this period just here, which is from mid-February onwards. This is the point where the stratospheric warming has occurred. And uh, you see there's increasing amounts of scatter uh, within the ensembles here. So we've got several ensemble members that are very mild, but several that are going down to minus 10 at 850 HPA, which is a cold, uh, very cold level. That's around where we are uh, right now. So lots of scattering there. It tells us that the GFS ensembles are playing with various solutions and scenarios. What we can see is maybe a bit of a drying trend because it's going to go quite and settle later this weekend into next week. But then after the middle of the month, in the second half of the month, actually it's turning a little bit drier then. Uh, so signs that pressure is starting to rise. And of course, where the pressure goes, where that high pressure goes, if it goes to the Arctic um, in the form of a blocking feature, that will be the uh, critical factor. Temperature anomalies for the next week, the 6th through to 14th of February, coming out colder than average for the UK. And either most of Western Europe is coming out colder than average as well. So some pretty cold days still to come. Precipitation anomalies are close to average, uh, maybe a bit wetter than average for the northwest, a bit drier than average down in the south and the southeast too. This is how the GFS is looking for Saturday. This is the latest GFS run. Still under quite a cold ridge across England and Wales on Saturday, but turning a bit milder, wet and windy across Scotland and Northern Ireland. That pushes through by Sunday and returns us to quite a cold uh, west northwesterly flow. Uh, we go through into Monday and pressure's rising a little bit in the south, so quite a cold start to next week there, a little bit more unsettled up in the north. And then we go into another phase of wet and windy weather through the middle part of next week. This is Wednesday 14th, Valentine's Day, when it's looking quite wet and windy once again. Uh, up to the end of next week and going up to day 10, which is Friday 16th of February. Uh, we keep things unsettled, so quite wet and windy there in the second half of next week. Notice still got these pink and purple colours here around Greenland and the Northern Atlantic. So up to day 10, the polar vortex is still in business. It's still churning away uh, with those cold temperatures around Greenland and uh, back into the Arctic, into the North Atlantic at that point. But if we just go a little bit beyond that, probably shouldn't, but I'll just take you a bit beyond day 10, you'll see very quickly we're starting to find a pattern change taking place. So those purple colours and pinks over Greenland are being replaced by blue colours. And eventually we start to raise heights just generally to the north. So heights are rising over Scandinavia, pressures rising around Greenland, Iceland as well. And look how it all finishes up. We actually end up very quickly forming a big blocking area of high pressure around Greenland and Iceland and pulling in some very cold winds from the northeast. That's the kind of thing we're looking for after this stratospheric one. It may be a little bit soon to get that happening. It might be another week or two on. But I think we are looking to get a really quite significant block in place. And it can happen very quickly. It just depends. Every stratospheric warming is different. Sometimes it'll take quite a long time to get an atmospheric response. Sometimes you never get an atmospheric response. Sometimes it can happen very quickly within 
just a few days. And they're all different. Uh, so we're just going to have to wait and see how quickly this uh, stratospheric warming impacts the atmosphere. And of course, it might not necessarily be that the block is in that position. That's a perfect position to turn us cold with that blocking feature around Greenland and Iceland. It allows the winds to truly turn into the north and the east, pulling genuinely very cold Arctic air. But not every uh, block will sit in that position. For instance, if we were to form a block over there, more towards Canada, uh, then a lot of the cold air will go down into the Atlantic, and we might actually find ourselves on the mild side of the block. So you just never know either. I think it's pretty random where the block is going to be uh, sitting. Uh, have a look at the east of the US. So again, for Saturday, we're quite cold on Saturday, although it is turning a bit milder, wetter and windier in the north. We go through to Sunday. And then to Monday, and it looks quite cold and showery then as we go in into the start of next week. That takes us to Tuesday, also looking quite cold and uh, showery. Wet and windy for Wednesday, and this continues up to Thursday and the Friday as well, which is day 10, Friday 16th. Um, notice by Friday the 16th, the uh, purple colours are beginning to diminish. So that's how the purple colours looking on Sunday. Lots of them up there, indicating the polar vortex is... Uh, churning away uh, to our northwest but notice very gradually those colors are beginning to lift out so by day 10 friday 16th of february we might already be starting to see heights not necessarily rising over greenland but we're certainly losing the intensity and the strength in the polar vortex and of course as the zonal winds are starting to go into reverse at that point we're still Thirdly, in a west wind, there's no real blocking feature. If we go on a few more days, we will possibly find one forming. Finally, let's have a look at CFS V2 for next month. These 500 millibar heights break it down into week periods. The first week period will take us from the 6th through the 12th of February. Um, coming week is cold. We've got below average heights up here, above average heights down there. But we've also got uh, uh, above average heights over Scandinavia and to our southeast, which means that for the flow, we're doing something like that. We're placed on the cold side of the jet stream and uh, looking pretty chilly there, I have to say, in the week ahead. Week two looks like that. It's the 13th to the 19th of February. Below average heights, centre through the UK, above average heights in the Atlantic. We've got some blocking up there. Jet streams line northwest, southeast. That's quite cool, but also unsettled through the second, uh, the middle week of um, month. Now, we go through to week three, which is the 20th to 26th February, and the blocking signal is strengthening to our north. We're building those red colours from Scandinavia to Greenland to Canada, below average heights underneath it. And it looks like we'd be pulling in some cold air from potentially the east and the northeast. And then we continue with that blocking signal for week 4, 27th of February to 5th of March. Above average heights around Greenland and extending back into the Arctic. Below average heights to our southeast. And we could be pulling down wind straight from the north there. That could be really very cold indeed as we're going into the end of February. And of course, lasting into the start of March. Not inconceivable, we could have quite a delayed spring uh, this year. Uh, if you want an early spring, really this stratospheric warming is happening at just the wrong time. You wanted it earlier in the winter so that it would have faded out its impacts uh, by the spring. Where it's happening now could well be that uh, we're going to see quite a chilly, certainly first half to March, coming up. But again, I have to emphasise the position of the blocking is a critical factor. And uh, we don't yet know where exactly that blocking will be sitting. So we might find ourselves on the mild side of the block. If we do, then um, obviously it won't be overly cold at all. So that's what you're up to date uh, with the latest. Uh, if you get any snow, then remember you can uh, email your uh, snow picks to uh, gazwebbers at gmail.com. We can uh, feature, uh, feature them in videos. And uh, also you can post them at the comment box at gazwebbers. Uh, and uh, then it's all eyes on what's happening at the end of the week. Could be, <coughs> excuse me, could be another little dose of snow um, early Friday. Then generally going into more of a westy phase. But still quite cold actually through weekend. And into next week, all eyes next week will be on that stratospheric warming. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.